B-L-O-R-I-S. Brinkman is B-R-I-N-K-M-A-N. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for letting us talk to you today. Appreciate it. Today's date is October 29th of 2013. Uh, my name is Robert Bauman, and we're conducting uh, this interview in Richland, Washington. Um, so let's start, uh, if you could, Doris, by having you tell us about how you came to Hanford, what brought you here, and when, when did you arrive? Okay, I was, as I stated before, I spent seven years with the Soto Conservation, with the CCCs. And then I got a job with DuPont and spent one year at Rosemont, Minnesota. And that was from 1942 to 43. So I came out here in September of 43. They came out here and uh, they sent me out to 200 West. And I came out to 200 West. And there wasn't much going on there yet. It was pretty, pretty uh, be in the beginning part of it. Now, they were digging, they were excavating for the 221T building, and uh, I think they were probably building on the uh, uh, powerhouse. Well, my, my first job, they had to get water down there, and there was a water line uh, just north of us, as I recall. And the first thing we had to do was to have temporary water line. And that was made of wood pipe. And they would, we, it was laid out, and it was laid out like this. So it, it circum, made a circle around there so that all the facilities would be able to get water from this water line. And um, I was given the job of somebody has to follow the work, you know, and, 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 uh, and there would be places where we'd have to pour some concrete. And it was wood pipe, and uh, it, was, it was wood pipe was certainly new. And uh, so when we, when we got that pretty well taken care of, I was given the job to follow the steam lines. Now, as I said, the powerhouse was, was under construction, and the uh, steam line that came out of the powerhouse was about 16 inches in diameter, and then, it, and you see, at that time, it was the T building and the U building, mm -hmm. and the steam lines came out of the powerhouse, which was kind of halfway in between the two, and then then one line went up towards the T building, and the other line went down toward the U building. Well, there wasn't, there was construction or excavation being going on at the, two, I think they called it the 221T building, and the steam lines were necessary because they were going to furnish the, the steam for all the construction there. Now, in, in the steam line, it doesn't sound like a very important job, but we would probably go three, four hundred feet, and then there would have to be a, what they called a expansion loop there. It would go like this. Hmm. And that was to take care of the expansion when when the uh, steam was in operation. Now the thing that they would, what we did was we would construct maybe three, I don't remember, but, but three to five hundred feet in length. And then we, then there would have to be a a loop to take care of the expansion. And what we would do is to construct a line 
and then about midway between these expansion loops, we would cut the line and, and take out about uh, oh, two to three inches, as I recall. And then they would bring, put uh, chains on there and bring those two together and um, weld them together. Now the reason for that is that the tension was on there when it was cold. And when they put the steam in the line, the expansion would make the steam line pretty much without tension on it. Get the idea? Mm -hmm. And uh, along with with that steam line, I worked on uh, the construction of uh, several permanent buildings that were uh, part of the main construction there. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was and that was the um, we had the laundry and we had the office building and a few buildings like that. I had I, I worked on those too. Now when when the work was all complete, my portion of the work was finished there. I went to the 200 East area, okay. and I don't I don't really remember what I did there, but I think it was probably similar to what I did over in the West area. <coughs> and after about a year's work there, my the work that I was doing was pretty well completed, and so I went to. Um, Excuse me. See, see, at my age, names don't come That's quite right. like they used to. Yeah, yeah. But I went to um, Indiana, to the Indiana Ordnance Works, oh, okay. and I worked there for about a year. And uh, by that time, uh, after completing the work there, I went to the Wilmington. Uh, head office there, mm -hmm. and I worked there for a couple of about two and a half years. But you know, after being out here a year, I couldn't quite get this place out of my mind. As as, as they, we said, if you can last mm -hmm. six months, mm -hmm. you're going to like it. But Many people came out here, didn't last six months. When I came out here in the beginning, I was going to, uh, the fellow that I was working with at Rosemont was already out here. And he had a room in Pasco, and I was going to room with him. So when I got out here, and I called his number. I said, I'd like to speak to Ham. Mr. Ham terminated last Friday. And there was a, another man with me. Mm -hmm. And he said, Mr. Brinkman, I don't know anything about Mr. Ham. But I'll tell you one thing. It takes a damn good man to stay out here. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, after after another year down at Wilmington, or down at um, Indiana Ordnance Work, I went to Wilmington and I stayed there for two, about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And then there was an opportunity for me to get back out here. Mm -hmm. I didn't hesitate. I came out here again. Got out here and I think it was, uh, 1948, mm -hmm. and I've been here ever since. <laughs> <laughs> what was it about the place that made you want to come back? One of the things is the climate. Mm -hmm. This is ideal climate. We don't have these 40 degree weather 
that we had in Wisconsin. Once in a while, it did get cold here. One, one, one time, I was, let's see, we did have six days of cold weather. And the weather, it, the temperature got as low as twen minus 26 or 27 wow. degrees. And that was six days. And then I went out in the evening, and oh, I says, we have a Chinook. Chinook, they called a Chinook when the a warm breeze would come in there. And it's Chinook. And, and, and the temperature went up. 40, 50 degrees at night. So the cold period was over with. But uh, I just like the weather. I like the people that were here. You know, they were people that were out here for one purpose. We've got to get this thing built. We need need this in in our war. So that was that was the main thing that we uh, that I liked. When you when you first came in 1943, what were your very first impressions of the place? Do you remember? Well, I th I I I really didn't hate the place. A lot of people did. Mm -hmm. We didn't have very much sunshine. There was about six weeks we didn't. The sun didn't shine. But. Uh, I, I really, I really enjoyed the place. And when you came out here to work, what uh, what did you know about the work you were doing, or what Hanford was for? Well, in the first place, you didn't know what we were going to make here. Nobody, there were few people that knew, but that was not discussed. We did not discuss what we were going to make here. What it was going to be used for. That was absolutely quiet. Do you remember when you found out? Yes, when I was, I think it was in Indiana Ordnance Work, when they dropped the bomb. Then I knew what, <laughs> what we were doing out here. This was very important. The bomb was very important. Yeah. And when you <coughs> worked out here in 1943, do you remember how much money you made? Yes. I made, um, uh, I think it was, um, about uh, $85 a week. And how many how many hours a week was that? Oh. Well, when I first started out here, it was nine hours a week, six days a week. You put in about 54 hours. And then when you came back in 1948, what sort of job did you uh, have when you came back here? I have to think a little bit on this, on what I did. Because I was, <clears throat> I don't remember what exactly what the first job was. But <clears throat> my biggest job after getting back here was construction of of su supervising, or not really supervising, but seeing that the job was done according to the plans of the tank farm. Okay. We had <clears throat> these underground tanks. You see, we had waste, and that waste had lots of plutonium in there mm -hmm. that we didn't get it all out. The, the, uh, Uranium was 
changed in part of it was changed into plutonium and then that was in the 100 area or yeah the B area and 100 areas mm -hmm. and then in the 200 areas they separated the plutonium and the plutonium was used to make the bomb and then the the um, there we had tank farms uh, I'm trying to think how many 750,000 gallons or something like that and we usually had 12 steel tanks and uh, we dig a hole, hole way down deep and these t t tanks uh, were I think something like 75 feet in diameter and uh, we'd pour a concrete base and then we'd build from there and they'd go up about 75 feet and then when they were all completed then we'd backfill again and then we'd have these tanks ready for the waste from the process that was going on there and uh, well I think I don't remember just how many but but we had maybe three four tank farms and I worked on on those tank farms I was known as the tank farm engineer I guess something like that so did that what did being a tank farm engineer involve sort of supervising yeah you you have to have somebody there to we would we would have a, a contractor do the work mm -hmm. and we would have to see that it was done properly check everything that was done and, and be very careful about the backfilling and that sort of thing so how long did you work uh, at the tank farms then oh I think about two three years probably and what did you do after that Well, I have to think now. <laughs> After that, I got involved mostly with, as we call it, the project engineering, and, and with the, with this place, there were always new facilities being created we had to and, and we'd call them a project maybe we would design this project and uh, <coughs> and then follow the construction of it but, they, but there was considerable work being done all the time and uh, I was part of the project engineering work And so how long in all did you work at Hanford? When did you stop working at Hanford? Okay. I was 59 and that was in 1971 I think it was. And then I retired. And uh, about a year later why they called me and said would you come out and help us and I said no and then I thought a while a bit and I said wait a minute call me tomorrow I'll think about it and they called the next day and I says I'll come out and work about four months and you know I enjoyed it very much and the next year I went out again for four months and I did that for four years <laughs> finally I got to the stage where I said no I think I've gone long enough it's now time for me to to travel so after that why then my wife and I traveled all over the world we took 
three month tours and and uh, went around the world, down South America, and that sort of thing. And we loved it. We loved that very much. I want to go back to when you when you first came to Hanford in 1943. Uh, and it's, you you mentioned that a lot of people stayed just for a little while and left. Um, what sorts of things were there to do uh, for fun? Was there entertainment available? What sorts of things happened here? Well, we they had a big place down at, at uh, Hanford itself. Uh, you know, they built uh, barracks for people. And they had, uh, well, for one thing, in, in 10 days they built a great big building, was, which is the uh, entertainment building. And they had party art, they had uh, dances and that sort of thing. And they had uh, uh, beer places around. People could buy a uh, jar of beer. And they had lots of those. They had, to, they had to have facilities here that would interest people so they would stay. Mm -hmm. And they'd spend a lot of money on that <coughs> make interest for people. Mm -hmm. And you said when you first came, you, you did you stay in Pasco? No, I, let's see, I first... I stayed up at um, Grandview. Oh, okay. I stayed there and worked back and forth. Then I got, then I got a house. In 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 Richland, and that was great then. And I stayed there until uh, till I moved out to uh, to Indiana. Yeah, Indiana, right. And then when you came back in 1948, where did you did you move into Richland? Yeah, right in there. I got a house. Mm -hmm. I got a house right away, practically right away. And what was uh, Richland like as a community in the 1940s? Well, it wasn't a big town. 19, in the 1940s, oh, you mean before we came out here? No, I mean when, when you were here. All right, when we were here, so you have to think a little bit. Uh, we had um, um, we had uh, uh, a number of stores and um, but the um, Pasco Pasco had had uh, the stores and Kennewick had had stores and most of the shopping was done over in those areas. But we did then we had the uh, C C Anderson place here, and that was a place they had good good material in there that you could buy. It wasn't a very big shopping area here, but mm -hmm. it was a, it was adequate. That was we'd say that. Did you go over to Kennewick and Pasco occasionally then to oh, shop? Sure. Yeah. And the funny part of it was, my daughter would when we got over to Kennewick, she said, "This is a real city." <laughs> A little bit different than <laughs> than uh, Richland, Richland was, right. but Richland was was being built all the time and, and adding new facilities, new stores, mm -hmm. new houses all the time until it got to be a pretty good place. I've had a, a few people I've talked to from that period talk about the dust storms. Was that a a 
miss you at all that you remember? Yes, we had dust storms. And when we had a dust storm, we closed the windows, of course, but there would be dust all over the inside of your house. And that was the thing that sent quite a few people out of here. They'd have a dust storm, and then they'd leave. But it didn't bother, it didn't bother us. We just took those things in stride. We liked it. By that time, I liked it here. Mm -hmm. And when we came back as on the second time, we got this house, and right across the street was the, was the uh, school. My wife went over and said, I'm a teacher, I have a master's degree, I would like a job. She got a job as a fifth grade teacher just like that. <laughs> <laughs> and she taught there for 23 years. And which school was this? Fifth grade. Oh, but uh, do you remember which elementary school it was? Which? Yeah, it was uh, Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark. Lewis and Clark. And we lived right across the street from there, right on the corner. Oh, okay. Did you have one of the alphabet homes? Yeah, H house. H house. Mm -hmm. And then the time came when we were able to buy that house. And that was wonderful, too. That turned into a good a good deal for us. Do you remember how much? Yeah, how I much paid about $6,000 for it. Then I added, I did some construction on it, mm -hmm. added, enlarged the two bedrooms, and uh, we, when we sold it, why, well, I, I don't mind saying it, we sold it for 85000 and uh, made, made, got a return of, a, say, like seventy six or $77,000. So that was a good thing for That's us. a pretty good deal. Yeah, it was a very good deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> President Kennedy came out here in 1963 to dedicate the N Reactor. I wonder if, did you were you there? Did you see him when he came? And I all sure that? was there. What do you remember about his, his uh, visit here? I don't remember anything about Bob. About his speech, he just, as I recall, he emphasized the fact of the importance of this work here. That was the, probably the main thing. And you tried to make us feel like we were really doing something great for the country. And I guess we were. And did. You and your whole, were your whole, whole family out there as well, or did oh, you? Oh yeah. yeah, the whole family was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very special event. You see, they they uh, it was wonderful for for us to have that school there because <laughs> my wife could go over there and teach and then get back in time, and when I got home, why the meals were ready. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wanted to ask you about security at Hanford. Uh, did you have to have a special clearance uh, oh, for yes, the sort of work you yes, did? And yes, we had to have a few clearance. Mm -hmm. um, and are there any other any uh, events that really stand out in your mind or? Any things, what? Any events that stand out in your mind or things that happened during the time you worked at Hanford that you just thought were really interesting or important? Or Well, uh, uh, I should be remember, but my mind doesn't, doesn't function like it, it uh, should in that case. Uh, I don't know that there was anything important, things, important things that we had. Um, 
<clears throat> how was overall? How was Hanford as a place to work? How was what? Hanford as a place to work. Wonderful, as far as I was concerned. And what what was it about working there that bit made wonderful for you? Well, we worked out in the area most of the time, and. Uh, People, we we all worked together. That was the thing. I think I, that was it. We were all working together, helping to do accomplish what we were set out to do there. Now my mind doesn't work quite like it it should. <laughs> Of the different jobs you had at Hanford, did, was there one that was a favorite for you, one that you really enjoyed the most? Mm. It wasn't the tank farm. That wasn't this. But, uh, or I think the part I liked the best was in the, in the latter part there where we, we worked on were very various projects and uh, the projects were our our projects so to speak and uh, and we, we were interested in, in seeing that those they we probably designed them, worked worked out the design, and then followed the construction of it. And we were just anxious to see how 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 it worked out. <laughs> Is there uh, anything I haven't asked you about yet, or that you haven't had a chance to talk about yet, in terms of? either working at Hanford or living in Richland that you think would be important to, to talk about? Well, at, at, as I said, my at, at my age here, my mind doesn't uh, do quite what it it uh, what I hope <laughs> it would do. You're doing great. <laughs> well, we just uh, oh when when we got as far as the schools are concerned, we had such great sports here. We had we the, the our basketball team has won the state championship three times. They have won the state championship in football once or twice, and uh, uh, this has just been a, a very wonderful sport area, sports area. We we've had uh, quite a few basketball players that uh, were played well for the college, for colleges. And as I said, we won state championships three times and got second place uh, maybe th three or four times. It's, it, it was just wonderful sports. And uh, we were always, my wife and I were always interested in sports. We would go to the other cities and that sort of thing. My son played on the basketball team. Well, I want to thank you very much for letting us talk to you today and for well, sharing I, your memories. My mind doesn't, doesn't work quite the way it should right now. <laughs> I think it's working pretty darn well myself. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you again. I really appreciate it. Well, I'm sure glad that uh, I, if I have anything here that uh, be of some use to yes. you, I'm sure I'm happy to have uh, helped out. Absolutely. Thank you very much.